Hello, everyone. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to just slowly log in. Um, my name's Joanne, and we're just going to give folks another three to four minutes just to log in and grab some water or coffee. Um, so we'll probably get started promptly around 6.04, give or take. Um, so just use this opportunity, grab a glass of water, a notepad, whatever works. I see a few more folks have joined us. We're getting started in another two minutes. So feel free to use this opportunity to just get yourself some water, coffee, tea, a notebook, and we'll get started shortly. <coughs> Perfect. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for the Passing the CFA Information Session with Michael Halinka. My name is Joanne, Joanne Huynh, and I'm the Program Director for Business and Professional Studies here at SES. So before we get started, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping. Um, the first is our land acknowledgement. So I wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Senecas, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work on this land. Secondly, please note that this information session will be recorded. So in the event that you are disconnected or would, you, would like a copy of the slides, they will be emailed to you within a few days of this presentation. And finally, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Michael Holinka. So Michael received his MBA from the University of Toronto and became a CFA chart holder in 2004. He is a tenured professor at George Brown College and Design and is the sole instructor for passing the CFA examination courses through the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. For approximately 15 years, Michael was a business commenter for CBC Radio and Television. He has co-written two books with Kevin Sylvester and is the sole author of Stalled, Jumpstarting the Canadian 
economy. He is current, so he currently writes a regular column for Supply Pro magazine. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Michael Halinka. And Joanne, thank you very much for the introduction, and I want to thank everybody for attending tonight's session. Now, I'm going to be giving you lots of opportunity at the end of this to ask questions of me, yours truly, but I'd like to start by asking a few questions from the people who are actually participating in this meeting. So could you please answer, are you currently working in the financial services industry? Either yes, full-time, yes, part-time, I'm working not in financial services, or I am not working full-time student. Oh, terrific. Okay, so the vast majority of you are working full-time in the financial services industry. Excellent. Let's move on to the second question. Are you currently a CFA candidate? So it looks like the majority of you are not currently CFA candidates. Fantastic. And now our last question. Are you most interested in CFA level one, level two, or level three? Oh, excellent. By the way, thank you very much for answering. This really, really helped me um, really sort of fashion what I'm going to be saying over the next few minutes. Well, as you can see, this is a free information session passing the CFA examinations with Michael Holenka through the School of Continuing Studies. And now I will go on to our first slide. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe that Toronto is the most competitive financial market in the world with the greatest expertise, hands down. Now, just a little bit of history here. There was a tremendous financial crisis in the United States in 2008, 2009. There was not a great financial crisis in Canada at that same point in time. I don't think this is a coincidence. I think that this is a result, really to a great extent, of a very, very sane immigration policy where what we do is we bring the best and the brightest from around the world and a lot of the best and the brightest from various countries want to move into the financial services industry. By the way, if you look at the market capitalization on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the majority of the biggest companies by far are in financial services, whether it's Royal Bank, whether it's TD Bank, whether it's Sun Life, whether it's, um, uh, oh, the financial group in Winnipeg, it just have an AI um, investors group as part of it, Power Financial Core, that's the one I was looking for. So yes, this is an extremely competitive market. So to get ahead, you need accreditation. Now, it seems to me that the two really most important accreditations that you get, get would either be an MBA or a CFA. On the other hand, if you've got a close relative on the board of directors of a major financial services company, maybe you don't even need a high school diploma to get your foot in the door. But I'm guessing that of the people who are on this call, I think there's about 35 of you, I'm guessing that none of you right now do have a close relative who's on the board of directors of a major financial services company. So then it comes down to either an MBA or a CFA designation. The way that I look at it, by the way, I have both an MBA from the University of Toronto. I graduated with that in 1986 and the CFA designation. The way that I would phrase this, ladies and gentlemen, is that you buy an MBA, you earn a CFA. The barrier to entry right now for the MBA program, the primary barrier to entry is the cost. I believe it's about 40 to 45,000, for example, at Rodman School. And it's implied that if you're doing an MBA, you will be working, pardon me, you will be studying full time and you will probably not be doing any working at all. So it's a proposition that's going to be just in direct cost, probably going to put you back about $100,000 in total. The CFA is very different. It's designed to be a course that you are doing while you are working, you are developing your career, you are paying for the CFA along the way, and you are moving your career up as you're moving the steps up along the CFA designation. That is what I think makes the CFA designation so special. Now, the CFA is a highly competitive examination. What you're seeing on the screen right now, this is from CFA Institute, are the 10-year average pass rates 
For CFA level one, it's 40%. For CFA level two, you can see 45%. And CFA level three, 52%. Now, by the way, these are the total pass rates. I would guess that the first time writer's pass rates are significantly lower. I would guess, and to my knowledge, they don't print statistics about this. I think the first time pass rate for CFA level one would probably be closer to 30%, probably for level two, closer to 35%, and probably for level three, close to maybe 35% as well. Most of you are working right now in the financial services industry. It is very difficult to balance your career and your academic pursuit. And the promise of this program is that you will never study more efficiently than you will if you join the U of T program. That is my basically guarantee. That is my commitment to you. Now, there's a reason for this. In fact, there are a few different reasons. One is you've got the benefit of having not only an experienced instructor, but an award-winning loan instructor. Why is this so important? Well, what some of the other prep courses will do, will bring in one individual who's a specialist, say, in equities, and one individual who's a specialist in fixed income, and one individual who might be a specialist in financial reporting. So if you've got a question about what happened sort of in last week's class, if you moved on, you don't have that same instructor who can help address it. And what I have found over the years is that students like to get used to a particular style of instructor. Now, the beautiful thing is, and we're going to be talking about one of the really unique benefits of the U of T program. One of the benefits of the program is, is that you can join it. You can attend two classes. And if you don't think this program is for you, you can withdraw and you will receive a full refund. So basically, there's like no financial risk in trying it out, in kicking the tires. I mean, particularly if you're already currently a CFA candidate and you're looking to be writing an exam if it's level one or level two in say May or August. Now, when I was approached by the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies, I was teaching in what was then the biggest CFA prep program in Toronto. And what I thought they offered was a course. And what I wanted to offer was a complete program. And the complete program goes something like this. I don't want students to read the material before they come to class because it is very time inefficient to read something that you don't understand. Rather, what I've prepared are 30 minute audio pre-lessons which contextualize what we will be dealing with in that night's class. I have prepared proprietary notes and what I will do during the class sessions on the weeknight, and I'll talk about the structure in a moment, what I will be doing in the, in the weeknight classes is I will be presenting you with you know, what I would say would be like a more traditional lecture. The Saturday sessions would be much more like a tutorial, but I will be the instructor for both the classes on the evening sessions and the tutorial sessions as well. Because all the classes are online, they're all recorded, which gives you the opportunity of either watching the entire class again, or maybe you have to miss it because of a work function or maybe a social function, or you know, maybe you're feeling a little bit under the weather, whatever the case may be, because all of the classes are recorded, you can pick them up and you won't be missing anything. Now, what I've also prepared along the way are very focused short video modules. So when we're hitting a very, very difficult concept and there are difficult concepts in each of the levels, rather than having to sit through the entire two hour class to, for example, get up, a tutorial in a particular equity pricing model. You can watch that video module. They're generally between three to five minutes. It is extremely time efficient. I provide quizzes and exams along the way. The quizzes and exam structure is a little bit different for level one versus level two and level three. There is unlimited access to me throughout, to meet on Zoom, or if you were in Toronto, even to meet in person. And I am a huge one, ladies and gentlemen, for networking opportunities. And in fact, for all of the students who register in the course before Tuesday, October 8th, there is going to be a networking opportunity where you're going to be able to meet me and all of the other students in the class. And look, if you're at all interested in pursuing this and working with me, this is what I would strongly suggest. Register for the course.
come to the networking opportunity. There's going to be free drinks and free food. Who can say no to that? Meet me. Meet some of your colleagues. And if after that, you're, yeah, you know, I just want to check it out before I basically have to pay the full tuition, you have the opportunity to attend the first evening class on Tuesday for level one, Wednesday for level two, and the Saturday tutorial sessions for level one are from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., for level two from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So you can come to the networking opportunity, meet me in person, meet my son who's done this beautiful, beautiful artwork that you will be seeing if you're part of the course throughout over the next several months and meet some other people in the program. Some past students will be there. This will be an opportunity for you to make a truly informed decision about whether or not this program is right for you. With respect to the starting dates, for CFA Level 1, the first class will be Tuesday, October 15th, and then Saturday, October 19th. The hours, the evening class is from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday class 9 to 11. We will be going for 10 weeks up to the break for the Christmas holidays. Then we will be picking it up after the Christmas holidays and running through January through approximately the end of March. The CFA Level 2, Wednesday, October 16th, the day after, basically the same kind of drill. We'll be running for 10 weeks, break for the two and a half or three weeks for the Christmas holiday, pick it up, finish classes by the end of March. Our CFA Level 3 class, and I saw that there's one individual, only one individual, interested in CFA Level 3. So for that individual, if you've already booked or you're thinking about writing for um, February of 2025, it's not for you. And I sincerely apologize, and I hope I didn't waste your time and you didn't waste your time too much on this. What would make sense, the only thing that would make sense is that you would be thinking about writing in August of 2023. Each level altogether will have 40 classes of two hours, 80 hours of instruction. As you can see, the classes for level one and level two will end in March, which will give you ample time to review if you are writing either in May or August. The level three classes are ending on Saturday, May 31st, which will give you June, July, lots of runway, lots of review time to be absolutely prepared for the August examinations. And in each course, there are mock exams that are provided that will give you a very, very good indication of how well you are prepared for the various topical areas. Very importantly, guys, you want to know how much this course is going to cost. It would be $1,995 plus HST. And what it will give you is access to the materials content and to me for the entire calendar year through 2025. So let's talk for the level one and level two about the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is you write in May of 2025 and you're unfortunately unsuccessful. Now you would have to wait six months to rewrite if you are predisposed to do so. You will have access to the content, you will have access to me over those six months because it is very important for me to see my students succeed and basically get them over the top. The 1995, by the way, is subject for the, uh, there's an education tax credit. So depending on the tax bracket you're in, it's not gonna cost you that, but it'll cost you some fraction, anywhere from 75% to maybe, I guess even the highest tax bracket, 50%. Guys, that's really all I have to say and all I have to say. But what I do want to do is open up this to questions and I guess you could do it on chat or I'm suspecting that you could also um, put on your microphone if you would pre be predisposed to do so as well. Oh, the last thing that I would like to point out, very importantly. Guys, you see my email address right there, michael.holinka at utoronto.ca. I would strongly encourage you to reach out to me over the next few days and either set up an in-person meeting if you're in the downtown Toronto area or a Zoom meeting to talk about your particular situation and make sure that this is for you. Uh, what it just popped up, I can see, uh, is my, my LinkedIn account. And you can definitely get LinkedIn with me and send a message as well. Um, it's very important to me that the students who study with me know what they're getting into and make an informed decision that this is the right course, this is the right program for them. So either email me or LinkedIn, and I will be getting back to you very, very soon, that I promise you. Except for one thing I've got to alert everyone to, I am going away this weekend, 
I will be leaving on Friday afternoon. I will not be back until Tuesday morning. We're taking a long weekend holiday with I and my wife and my son before I really get down to the rigor of the CFA and working on the CFA. So if you would reach out to me over the weekend, I can tell you right now, I will not be checking email. I will not be checking LinkedIn from about Friday noon to about Tuesday morning. So it's Wednesday right now. Please reach out to me tomorrow or early Friday, and then we can set something up sooner rather than later. And now, guys, I'd like to open up to you and any questions that you might have either through your microphone or through chat. And can we get the chat? I don't see chat right now. Oh, yes, here we go. Armin, thank you very much. Okay. Is there a U of T alumni discount for Rodman MBA students? I believe that the answer is yes. And Corey, if you could do me a favor and email me at Michael Halenka, I will connect you with the course administrator. Natalia, are you on the call right now? Natalia, are you there? Natalia, do you, can you provide some information in the chat to Ankur about the U of T alum discount? Um, you know what, Ankur, please email me directly. Oh, okay. Oh my God. So you got something from, I see a thanks. So maybe you got your, um, you got your question answered individually. Next, Aryan, what's the pass rate for level two for your class? Aryan, we used to keep those statistics when we used to do the classes in person. COVID sort of threw that a little bit upside down. What I could tell you was when we did the classes in person, the pass rates for level two would generally range between 65 at the low end and 85% at the high end for students who completed the course. And I do want to qualify about the completed the course. What we found when we were doing the classes in person was there was a pretty high dropout rate along the way. Uh, I think that many students, in fact, most students were not used to the rigor of the CFA program and just got overwhelmed by it and decided to give up on it. But what I would say for both level, level one was slightly higher. I see that Hasib has asked, what was the password for students in your level one classes? This was before we did things online. And at this point, we're really not, we, we haven't been in the position, we're gonna be starting actually now for the first time. I know this doesn't help you, but we're gonna be starting now capturing this in a, in a more comprehensive way. But to, historically, typically level two was 65 to 85 at the high end. Level um, one was typically 70-ish to 85-ish at the high end. Um, Tamur asked, can you explain the tax bracket that you mentioned a bit more? Yeah, so Tamur, there's something, an education tax credit that the government provides. And the it's a tax credit that the more money you make and the higher tax bracket you're in, the more benefit the tax credit will, will give to you. My understanding is that for most students who take the class, they'll be getting anywhere from 25% of a credit. So it basically knocks 25% off the cost of the course. Yes, Evan, we do have slides notes that we go through during our sessions. I don't just read to your audience or the group. What we do, Evan, is we post the notes on Quercus. I pull them up on the screen and we work through them together and we toggle back between the notes and the actual CFA content. Now, Lewis says, I've been recommended by many current industry professionals to use a prep provider such as Kaplan or Mark Meldrum. I'm curious as to your thoughts on how these compare to your program. Well, I know that when you work with either Kaplan or Mark Meldrum, there's a very wide variety of different programs that you can use. So I don't want to be unfair to either Kaplan or Mark Meldrum. And you know, make an apples and apple um, and make an apples and oranges comparison just because you know we I and U of T want the business and we want to take the business from them. What I would say differentiates this program from any other program that you will ever attend is the kind of one-on-one -on -one support that you will be receiving throughout from yours truly. Yesterday evening, I spent about 45 minutes on a Zoom call tutoring a student who's going to be writing the exam in November. And this is something that would be unheard of in either Kaplan 
Meldrum or any other program in the marketplace. So that would be, you would have to decide how much value that you would want to place on that. And once again, Lewis, what I would say to you and everybody else is register, come out on October 8th, visit a couple of classes at no charge. You're not fully satisfied. You think you can do better with somebody else. We cheerfully give you a full refund. CC, take PFP and CFA. Now, CC, that sort of depends on where you want to go in your career. So, CC, what I would like you to do, please, is reach out to me and we can have a talk about your particular situation. And then I can make an honest and uh, I think a fair judgment. CC, does that sound good? Haseeb says, do you recommend writing the February 25 level one test? Uh, February, you will not be ready. We will, we will have gone through half of the content. So I strongly recommend that if you would be registering for the class starting in October, that your right dates would either be May of 2025 or August. Mary, how much study time outside of course, of course time? Mary, I think that for most people, for, yeah, for level one, it's about 15 hours a week including the four hours of class time. So it's about two to three hours on Tuesday night, two to three hours on Wednesday, two to three hours on Thursday, about four hours Saturday, about four hours Sunday. If you would put that 15 hours in, and Tungi, you asked a, a series, a, a similar question, then when the classes end during your review, I think that about 20 hours is appropriate. So that would be three hours a night, Monday through Thursday. I'm assuming, by the way, guys, that you're working full time at about six hours on Saturday, six hours on Sunday, that's gonna give you the, basically the margin of safety that you need to make sure that, or to give you a very high probability of being sex successful on your first attempt. Steve, I have no knowledge background, but I want to get into the financial field in the next few years. Is CFA level one too difficult for me or is it friendly financial beginners? Steve, CFA is de designed for people who know absolutely nothing about the financial services industry, but have got strong reading um, and re reading comprehension skills and are relatively strong at arithmetic. It's not even mathematics. It's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. What you will be taken on is a very steep learning curve that will get you to where you have to be. And Steve, just to that point, the very best student I ever had for CFA level one had absolutely no background in financial services. She was a woman who had studied fashion design and she was studying in her third language. Her first language was Japanese. Her second language was Mandarin. Her third language was English. But what she did more faithfully, more faithfully than almost any other student I've ever had was follow the study schedule that I provide on a weekly basis. Shazad, thank you for all you do, networking and job postings. Shazad, it's online, unfortunately. But it's going to be online, but we're going to be finding ways. We're going to find ways that we're going to be bringing everyone together. And yeah, that's what Tuesday, October 8th is. I hope, we're, honestly, I, I hope a lot of people just even, even to come out for the free drinks and the free food, register. It's going to be a downtown location. It's going to be a blast. Sandeep, no, we don't offer CFA prep or CFA only. I am not. Look, I've got a lot of respect for the CFP designation, but I do not have it. And I'm a CFA charter holder. I like capital markets. I can't help myself. Well, it looks like we have run out of questions. Any other questions, any other comments at this time? Well, what happens, great. What happens if you get behind one week? So Evan, let's talk about where you got behind, okay? If you get behind, in the first half of the course, then you've got three weeks over the break to catch up because we're gonna be breaking before Christmas and then we're gonna be picking things up um, in the first week of January. If you fall behind a week, if you be fall behind a week in the second half of the course, well, we're finishing at the end of March and your exam is not until mid to late May, so you've got plenty of time to make it up. And that's why we sort of designed the course this way with this timeline. I would not worry about falling behind one week or two weeks. It's simply, it's really a non-starter 
because everything is recorded. And the way that it's designed, we I would make sure that you got caught up and you would get through it. Shazad, do you recommend doing the readings? No, I don't want you to read it word for word. It is time inefficient. I prepare comprehensive notes and I prepare video modules. And we are going to be going through all of the examples that CF Institute provide. We're going to be working through each and every one of the end of chapter problems they provide. Reading the material word for word is incredibly time inefficient. I did that myself. And then I made my notes. And I realized that if I had made, or if someone had made notes of the quality that I ultimately made, it would have saved me a heck of a lot of time. I would have passed the exams with a lot less sweat. And that sort of goes back to what I said earlier, ladies and gentlemen, this is about making your studying time as efficient as, in fact, more efficient than it's ever been. That's the ultimate promise. You still have to put the time in, you still have to put the work in, but you will never be as efficient as you have been if you follow the program that I'm laying out, that to me is really the promise of the CFA of passing the CFA examinations. Well, I'm glad this isn't radio, because in radio, thanks for my last question. Your thoughts on writing in November? Um, you can't, Lewis. You can't start now and be successful to write in November, or I think it's virtually impossible. So um, whether or not, look, my course wouldn't help because we would be through like, I don't know, like like 10 of the 40 classes. If you're thinking of doing this independently, oh, next year, of course, oh, okay, okay, that's better. Yeah, perfectly fine. You're giving yourself lots of, uh, um, you're, you're giving yourself lots of runway. So Sarah had asked, do you recommend buying the books? Once you register for the CFA exams, ladies and gentlemen, you automatically have electronic access to the books. I find it easier to work with hard paper copies, but I'm an old man, I'm a dinosaur. You guys are kids, you're used to doing the online stuff much more than I am. So I would recommend it, but it's not a necessity. Oh, Lewis for November? Yeah, makes perfect sense. Um, Shazad, you're very welcome. Um, you have a great evening as well. If you haven't signed off, which we may have. Sakshi, um, yes, there are job opportunities after completing level one. Guys, one of the things that having level one on your resume does is it signals to the marketplace that I am really serious about my career in financial services. Everybody knows that the pass rate is 40%. Everybody knows that it takes hundreds of hours, not scores of hours, hundreds of hours to prepare and write successfully, whether it's level one, level two, or level three. Just having passed level one on your resume is saying something very important about you that is not true about the majority of your competition and face it guys, it's a competitive marketplace. It's saying something very important about you that cannot be said about your competition. So Sakshi, there will be surely opportunities that you would never already, never even come close to having if you didn't have level one on your resume. And once again, you're very welcome. How can we get the recording of the meeting? Joanne, can you help with this? Can you jump in and provide some insight? And you're muted. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, it just takes a minute to pop on. Um, so we actually have a list of everyone that has registered, and we will end up sending everyone within the next like few days or so. Just give us some time, um, and then um, we'll send you a copy of the recording to the email on file. Excellent, Joanne. Thank you very much. Tunga, yes, someone who doesn't have any financial background can be successful if you put the work in, if you do the work. Tracy, could you please outline the level three study in your course, especially the essay writing component? Yes, yeah, so Tracy, what we're gonna be doing in level three is we are going to be having um, along the way, 
either five or six two hour, basically, um, how can I play, put this? Well, with tests along the way, they're going to be looking very, very much like the um, way that the level three exam is going to be written. Um, Tracy, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but what they started doing this year with level three is they do an essay question, multiple choice, essay, multiple choice, essay, multiple choice. They break them up. In the old days, all of the essay questions were in the morning and all the multiple choice were in the afternoon. And now what they do, they, they break them up. So you're going to be having lots of practice on the essay writing. I'm going to be marking all of those exams and be giving students very focused feedback on, you know, is there too much detail? Is there too much verbiage? So there is going to be a coaching, a very important coaching element in level three to the, um, to the essay writing component. The other thing, Tracy, is what you're going to be provided almost uniquely is copies of past written exams. The CFA Institute up to 2019 used to release, they no longer release the written portion of the morning exams. There's a funny story about that, that I will tell my level three students. So you might want to, I, no, you're not going to join just for the story itself. Anyway, but uh, there, is, um, there is some very valuable intelligence that is passed on because what they used to do is they used to give you what the, um, what the question was, and then they would give you like a sample answer as well. Till when we can pay for or register. So guys, this is a U of T thing. By the way, I support the decision. You have to pay in full before you register to register for the exam. And yeah, but again, you can get all your money back if you come to a couple of classes and you don't think it's going to take you to where you want to be. And Tracy, I would really urge you in particular to reach out to me and talk about the level three thing, okay? At your convenience, because the class doesn't start until January, but you've got my contact information. And of course, guys, on the um, when they e email out the presentation, what you will see, of course, is that my email address there. Or you could contact me through LinkedIn, whatever is easier for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's a saying that all good things must come to an end. And this was a very good thing. I really enjoyed the 40 minutes I spent with you guys. All I can say, guys, is look, make an informed decision. Don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um, yeah, tell me, you know, great. Think about the future and look, uh, you know, whatever works, guys, works. But I would really urge each and every one of you to, if you have any questions and you want to talk about your particular situation, I'm sorry, I've lost the person's name, but the individual who was like, should I be thinking about the PFP or the CFA right now? Reach out to me. I've got all sorts of time over the next couple of weeks and I enjoy helping students. Guys, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to be turning it over to Joanne now. And I look forward to connecting with many of you very, very soon. Perfect. Thank you again so much, Michael, for your time and sharing with us the overview of the classes and CFA program as a whole. Um, a fun housekeeping. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a pop-up for the program registration. If you folks are curious, feel free to click on that. That does bring you to our webpage for additional information. Um, in addition, um, as Michael had shared, we will be sharing the um, slide and the recording with you all soon. So with all that being said, we hope to see you out soon. And thank you, everyone, for spending your Wednesday evening with us.